Are you always putting off big tasks? Have you got passion projects that you really want to get on with, but you just don't feel you've got the time? I was exactly the same. For years and years, I never got to start this YouTube channel. I never got to do the big things I wanted to do. I mismanaged my time, I put stuff off, and I just did not get things done. That's because I always thought there wasn't enough time in the day. We all do this, we all say that, but actually there is enough time in the day. In this video, we're going to talk about time blocking, and trust me, it's going to change your life. It did mine. Hi, welcome back to Mark Ellis Reviews. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, it's still free to subscribe, so click the button and you'll never miss an episode. Right, time blocking. I'm gonna start with this um, by going through some stats which really, really scared me, and I think they'll scare you too. Apparently, full-time employees work on average eight and a half hours per weekday and five and a half hours per day at the weekend. The average employee spends two hours per day recovering from distractions. Two hours. That means as soon as someone walks into your office and distracts you by talking about last night's episode of EastEnders, you then spend two hours recovering from that one way or another. That sounds crazy, but trust me, I know it's true. The average knowledge worker checks email and instant messages every six minutes. Now, I think we can probably all relate to this. We're all doing this a little bit too much, aren't we? I do. And lastly, the average employee only works a total of three minutes before switching to another task. <sighs> I really hate those stats. I hate them in, in the same way that I used to hate throwing away time at my old job. And when I first became a freelancer, I used to just waste time. Looking back, I didn't think I was wasting time, but I'd get to the end of the day, look at my to-do list and think, what have you achieved? I hate it. And I hate, I really hate those stats. Um, it just, if you add that up across the population, you know, the people that are at work, it's frightening how much time's being wasted. Good news. The answer to all this lies in something called time blocking. Now you may have come across time blocking before. It may be the reason that you're watching this video and you may have been a little bit overwhelmed by the sheer complexity or seeming complexity that surrounds this topic. A quick caveat is that it's not a silver bullet. Time blocking won't make you instantly productive overnight, but it will get you in the right mindset to get more done with the time that you have available. I've only really started time blocking myself recently in a structured way, and I'll be honest, it's the only way that I can run this channel and do my day job at the same time. Without time blocking, I just wouldn't get either done, or I'd get one done and the other one would get neglected. So time blocking for me has really worked, and in this video, I'm gonna go through and show you how I do it and prove that it is not rocket science. And trust me, by the end of the video, you'll be much more geared up to be productive. So I thought I'd start about talking about my challenge. So the challenge that I have with work, because I think it will resonate with a lot of people who are watching this. So there's a few things that uh, are really important to me. The first thing is obviously my business. I run a concept marketing business. It's just me, I don't have staff. I have to do everything myself. The second thing is this YouTube channel, which is equally important to me. Um, they're two very distinct things. They're very, very different uh, projects. And although the skills from one do carry across into the other, they both need separate amounts of time. I'm also a pretty avid gym goer. You may not think it, but I am. Um, and I love keeping fit. It's a very important part of my day. So that has to, I have to find some time to go for a run or go to the gym. That has to be a part of my day. The same thing goes with my dog. He needs walking every day, which means I've got to take him out at some stage. I can't, he, he doesn't understand that I have all these other priorities and yeah, he, he wants to be walked. So he's a big priority. I also have deadlines that I can't miss uh, as a content writer, videographer. I have to finish projects on time. If I don't, I'll, I won't get paid. So that's a pretty easy one. I have deadlines I have to meet. I also have a three o'clock Zoom call that I have to make every day. No questions, it's there, I have to do it. It only lasts 15, 20 minutes, but I can't suddenly put my hand up and say, sorry, I won't be there today. So I have to do that as well. I also have all the ad hoc meetings that kind of come and go and the ad hoc projects, the, the last minute tasks that I'm asked to do that I, I just have to fit in. You know, if I, if I want to carry on delighting my clients and becoming a better freelancer myself, I have to fit all this stuff in and they come out of the blue. So they, I have to have space in the day to fit those things in. And lastly, I'm in a very happy relationship. I've got a fantastic home life. You know, I, I very much value my personal time. I think it's vitally important to fit that in. Um, a couple of years ago, I did get into this process where I was just working every hour God sends and not really spending the time on my personal life. And that's, I do not recommend that whatsoever. So the challenge is fitting all that stuff into one day and you only get eight hours to play with roughly. So what I've done, I've implemented something called time blocking. 
And I haven't done it in the way that, as I mentioned before, that you may have seen in other blogs or other videos where people get into the science of it and you know how to prioritise certain tasks and all that's important. But the way that I use time blocking, I think, is very, very straightforward, really simple, actually. Um, and for me, it works. I think it could possibly work for you. Now, the way I approach time blocking, I put it into four slots for each day. The first one relates to this channel. So basically, I spend an hour each morning on either writing the next video, or I perhaps do what I'm doing now, film the A-roll, film B-roll, do all the little bits and pieces that come with putting a video together and keeping the channel running. Um, I also run a blog on Medium and my own blog. That has to have that time as well. So every morning between eight and nine in my diary, it says Mark Ellis Reviews. Bang, that's it. It's always there. The gym is a bit of a floating time block for me, but it sits somewhere between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. So normally before lunch, I'll either go for a run or go to the gym. It sits within that two hour, two hour block, but it's generally an hour that I spend doing that. Then I have that 3 p.m. call that I mentioned. That's just in the diary. It's there. It happens every day, Monday to Friday, no question. And then dog, Eddie, bless him. Um, he gets a walk, generally speaking, anywhere between half five and and half six. So they're the four time blocks that I have, and that isn't my entire working day at all. Uh, that's not quite how it works. But with those four kind of pillars in my day, I can work around them. So I know that between eight and nine, I'm doing this, I'm working on my channel. I know that between 11 and one, I need to get some exercise done. I know at three o'clock, there's a call, it's going to happen, I've got to be there. And after half five, or as close to half five as possible, I need to get my dog walked. For me, starting work early is the key to all of this, really. So I get up, my, my alarm goes off at six o'clock. I roll out of bed about 10 past six after checking Twitter and everything, um, grab a coffee, and I start work about half six. Now, if you'd have told my five-year-old self this, um, that I was going to be starting work at 6.30 a.m., I'd have laughed you out of the room. Um, I'm dreadful in the morning. As a human being, I'm pretty useless. But in terms of a worker, I found that I can get a lot done at that time. So if I start work at half six and know that by eight o'clock I need to be starting the channel content, I've got a whole a goal to work to. And also it gives me an hour and a half to get quite a lot done. And I can do a lot in that time. So I can get a lot of writing done, I can get some emails done, um, all sorts of stuff I can just get done in that period of time. For me, that makes me feel better because by the time I get to the channel, I've achieved something. It's not as I'm going straight into this. It's, you know, I'm starting work, paid work, and it just makes me feel better basically. Now, the gym has become second nature for me. Again, if you'd have told me that five years ago, I probably wouldn't have believed that would be the case. Um, but yeah, it, it's become something that I just do now. Same thing goes for the dog walk. I've had Eddie for nearly 12 years. Dog walking is just part of my day. It happens. So I haven't got an issue with that. And 3 p.m. call because it's a call with other people. Obviously, I wouldn't be doing it on my own. Um, it's in the diary, it's scheduled, everyone knows what it is, and it just happens. It's been something that I've been doing for the last six or seven months. And that really is it, that's how I time block. And this is such a simple video, it's such a simple task. But before I implemented this, I was just trying to fit things in whenever I could. So for example, filming this A-roll, I will have either not done it today or kept putting it back and back and back and done it at the end of the day when I wasn't feeling particularly up for doing it. Um, it just doesn't get the attention it deserves. Whereas if it's in my diary, bang, it's going to get done. No questions. The early start for me is important as well. That just gets me in the right mindset. It gets things done before I start doing my first block of time. And I suppose actually that is a time block in itself. I just don't make a note of it in my diary. If you read other time blocking blogs and pieces of advice and watch videos about it, they'll show you examples of their calendar where every single hour is blocked out to something. Now, in theory, that's kind of what I do, but not in, not visually. I don't want to see that in my diary. That's daunting. You know, I'd much rather look at my diary and see, well, okay, start of the day, I know I've got an hour's worth of marketless reviews time that I need to work on. I know I'm going to go to the gym at that point, roughly between 11 and 1. I know I've got my call at 3 o'clock. I know I need to get finished at a decent time and take the dog out. Everything else kind of fits in around that. And what happens is, as, as a human being, you become very used to that structure around your day. And you start to learn where you can and can't fit things in. So if an ad hoc meeting request comes in, or if you've got a, a last minute request from a client to, to do a little job, you'll know pretty, pretty much if you can do it. Um, and what I would say is, even if the next guaranteed block of time is something which isn't work related. So the gym is a great example of that. I don't get paid for going to the gym, but it's very, very important to me because it, it kind of revitalizes me, it keeps me fit and healthy. Um, I know if someone contacts me 10 minutes before and says, look, can I have this now? 
I can say to them, you can have it. It's not going to happen now. You can have it this afternoon or it might have to be tomorrow morning. What I would have done in the past, I would have said, yep, perfect. No problem at all. I'll get it done for you and just left the gym, forgot about it and did do that thing and then not have my gym time. The consequence of that would be that I would be feeling grumpy for the rest of the day. Um, I wouldn't be as fit as and, and healthy as I was if I had gone to the gym. And it's just not good for your mental health. So um, you have to stick rigidly to those times as much as you can. However, things do sometimes go wrong. And there's a bit of a confession I'm gonna make here, which is that it's although I'm filming this and this is Mark of this Reviews content, the time is actually five to 12, yeah completely gone against all my advice there. But it's a perfect example of where you have to be a little bit flexible. Now the reason I'm doing this now is because yesterday I had an unusual day out on the road. Um, it's been a little while for various reasons um, that, that I haven't been out on the road doing other work elsewhere. Basically my diary shifted. Now the way I've dealt with that today is that I did not do the A-roll content this morning. Instead I kind of backloaded all the stuff that I would have done afterwards got that done and then thought, right, I'm going, I'm going to go for a run, let's say half 12. Um, I've got about an hour to get the A roll filmed. And that's what I'm doing now. And it's working because I've achieved a, a huge amount this morning. I did my thing yesterday out on the road that I needed to do. and I'm still doing this. So I haven't actually lost out at all. And it was actually a similar thing the day before yesterday where I was writing this particular video and, and planning it. Um, normally that would have been between the 8 and 9 a.m. slot on the Monday. I couldn't do that. So instead I did it late on the Sunday evening. Now that's very rare these days that I work at those times during the weekend. Um, but I will make an exception if the week that's coming up is exceptional. That's the key thing. It's not getting into a habit of doing, I'm not every Sunday night, I'm not gonna start planning videos. You know, I'm resolutely gonna to keep to these um, time blocks unless I have no choice due to client work to move it. I just have to promise myself that it won't become a habit. And that's, I've, I've managed that for the last six months. It's, it's worked brilliantly. And it's, it's the way I've managed to do a video a week and actually get this YouTube channel off the ground, which like I say has never happened until this point. The key is to work when you feel most productive. So if you feel productive at half nine, go for it. If you feel productive at three o'clock in the afternoon, base your timing around that. For me, I've worked out that I'm very, very productive early in the morning. So that's what I've done. So the other huge element of my productivity each week is actually music. And the headphones that I use play a massive role in this. Uh, my last video was a review of headphones that have literally changed the way that I work. So keep watching for a link to that video. And once again, thanks for tuning in. Enjoy your time blocking.